All right, we're gonna start by rebuilding this carburetor here for um, Chris at Tangle Tackle Fishing. He sent us a couple of uh, quadrajets off of his, uh, I think it's a 1983 30-foot uh, tier pursuit, something like that. So uh, one thing I noticed, um, he brought one in with the choke, or actually brought the chokes in. Uh, I noticed in his video that he uh, snapped off that screw right there. Normally, we don't take them out like that. Normally, we leave the choke on the engine uh, so that because that's very common to break that screw so um, I always take this uh, clip off right here just a little screwdriver get that out of there and then that choke can stay on the engine so but uh, first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna start by removing the choke so the choke is crimped in right here uh, this is the way it was in the 1970s and 60s when the carburetor came out quarter jets came out about 1966 uh, pretty much, but um, the original engines and even in the boats had uh, divorce ch or in the cars I should say had divorce chokes. So uh, this choke is this choke pull off is crimped. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and pry that off with a screwdriver. So I'll use this one. All right, so I just go right in here, just kind of pry it out, just like that. Take that out. <clears throat> I slide this out because we'll soak this, clean the paint off. Next, we'll remove this uh, crimp choke linkage piece. I just take a screwdriver, pry underneath it, spread it out, just like that. I'll take the gasket off this while I'm thinking about it. All right. Now this linkage here, I take a screwdriver like this. I pull it out just like that. And then I pull it up and I do like a quarter turn, flip it 90 degrees, kind of wiggle it like that. And you see it's got a little hook, just a little, well it's not a hook, but just a little um, uh, piece there that hooks into a lever in here. I'll show you later on. I actually don't even remove this if I don't have to, but that's how you get that out of there. Next we'll take out the secondary metering rods. <clears throat> so... We want to inspect, make sure this isn't bent. Um, a common issue is this gets bent. Um, guys don't take this off when they take the air horn off. We want to make sure that this is pretty even. And you can see this is bent a little bit. So, see how that one's just a shade lower? So that's been not installed right somewhere down the line again this is not hugely mission critical but when the four barrels open up and this air horn opens up like this that's what raises the jets or excuse me metering rods out of the jets so we'll adjust this later on with a pair of pliers the other thing to notice is see how there's a letter in here see it says i i don't know if you can see it or not i'll try these are letters that also um has is is the uh, the amount of travel that this would actually move because there's a lot of different secondary holders so this is this has a curvature or something to it so i i don't have a chart that tells me what's what but it's just something to note pay attention and so do the metering rods the secondary metering rods have letters on them probably not going to be legible uh these say av so just make sure they're the same, make sure nobody did anything stupid, you know. All right, next thing we're gonna do is we're going to take the fuel filler off. All right, this is installed correctly. A lot of times I see these backwards so that they put it like this. <laughs> and see, that would block off the fuel inlet. <laughs> so, but that's correct. A uh, little bit of dirt, nothing terrible. You know, I like these cleanable screens. There's supposed to be a gasket in here that's missing. So uh, I'll show you that on the uh, entry. Actually, there's a little bit of that metal. Looks like maybe aluminum or something in that filter. So maybe he's got some stuff going on in his tank or whatever. So no, we're not going to soak that. But like I say, there's a gasket that goes in here. I'll show you that when we get back together. Next thing I do is I take out this uh, accelerator pump linkage. 
Now you'll see most of the boat ones are on the inside. I don't think I've ever seen a boat engine that has it on the far side of this lever. Uh, but there's a roll pin here. So what I do is I take a small punch and I come in here and I drive it, drive it out. Now I don't go all the way, okay? Because what I want to do is when I go back together, I want to save room for my screwdriver and I want to be able to push this back in. So you just want to go out just enough so it pops out. Just like that. And then I left clearance back here so I don't have a whole hard time. If you do go too far and this bottoms out against this choke plate, you can get in here with like a pair of side cutters and get it to move back. But that's how I've always done it. All right. Next thing we'll do is we'll remove all the uh, air horn screws. There are, what, two, four, six, eight. There's nine of them. Oh, on this linkage, I'll just slide this out. I'm trying not to go too fast. Normally these are coming right apart, but... I know some of you like some of you guys like to use power tools. I I'm still old school. I still like using my hand. I can feel it how tight it is. You know, these are pop metal. This isn't really good metal. So it's easy to strip stuff. So big deal. It takes an extra three minutes. I'm sure I'll have a carpal tunnel surgery later on in life, but I'll take this off. Alright, and there's two screws down in here. So, now this is like a hybrid carburetor. This is like when they first start going to those torque screws, you know, the star bit. So this has some screwdriver flathead slot screws and it has some torque screws. Probably in like 1985, 1986, everything is going to be torques, even this little guy here. All right, I got all the screws out. All right, so what I'm going to do, and I left these two screws in here, is I'm going to take a screwdriver and I'm going to pry in between here and here. And that should pop this top right off, just like that. All right. You want to pull it straight out. So I pull it straight out. There's my two screws that were in this air horn. We'll throw those in the cleaner. This looks pretty decent. That's the air horn. We'll set this aside. Here's the accelerator pump that popped out. That normally goes right here. See how it squirts out. We'll set that to the side. We'll peel this gasket up. All right. And... Uh, this is a baffle here. Well, actually, we'll take the spring out, the return spring for the accelerator pump. Just take a screwdriver, pry that right out. On a boat, sometimes this gets corroded. Water sits in here. Uh, that spring can, you know, rust out, corrode out. Next thing I do is take a screwdriver, take this fuel baffle out. This fuel baffle is when the, when the float is down, you know, when the fuel pump's driving fuel in here, the fuel's going to want to squirt up. Well, it can wick through the gasket. So this baffle is here to try to keep the fuel down because paper will wick. So you just take a screwdriver like that, pull that out, that's just a baffle. I soaked that. All right, these are the primary meter rods. Well, actually that just popped right out. Normally you gotta pry that out with a little screwdriver. But these here are the metering rods that go into the primary. This is for primary operation, so the front two barrels. All right, I don't soak this. We don't want these to bend. This is brass, it's real a pain that screws up. All right, there's a little spring inside here. So I'll pull that up. Oh, it looks like a little big ballpoint spent or spring. This is a calibrated spring. So, I, I mean, it's calibrated. You know, there's there's engine vacuum in this uh, hole right here. So when I'm at idle and I've got vacuum, you know, these metering rods are down. This plunger is sucked down. Those metering rods are buried into the jet to reduce the amount of fuel going through the jet. Now, at idle, there's no fuel going through the jets anyway, and we'll talk about the idle circuit later on. But... Um, this is for high speed operation. So anything, you know, 1,000, 11, 1,200, that's when we start. When you see fuel going through the Venturis, that's when you're flowing fuel through the jet. So we'll set this aside for now. Now I do see one issue right here already. Um, you see the, um, the float, okay? See how that little hook is through one of those holes? That is incorrect. Um, that hook is supposed to go in the front and i'll show you that when we go to put it back together i mean i see a lot of these that are screwed up you know i mean it can get jammed and hung up in there so uh, but like i say through those little holes in the float the needle hook does not go through there that is incorrect so same thing we'll just pull this out straight up all right and this is how it's supposed to go see how it's hooked i hope this comes out right oh this little we'll set him aside See how they got this uh, 
hook through one of these float holes, that's wrong. It's got to go like this. Hook from the front. Just like that, not through the hole. What you want to do too when you take a look at this nitrofill float, this particular part number never had any trouble. There was an earlier part number in the 70s that was not used in a boat that these would sink. So you just want to take your thumb and you should not be able to crush it. You know, you hear a little crunches, but nothing terrible. You know, when this float sinks or whatever, you, you know, or or it, 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 it uh, absorbs fuel, I'll be able to take my finger and I can almost crush it. So this float's good. We're going to replace it anyway, but just an idea just to show you. Um, really not all that terrible inside. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to remove this seat. This is the needle and seat. Uh, well, that's a seat actually. We're going to go ahead and remove that next. And there's a tool for that to do it correctly, and that's this burrows tool. So we'll just go down in here. We'll line up the slot, and then we'll wheel it out of there. You can use a big screwdriver. I mean, I, I realize you're doing this at home. Nobody's got carburetor tools anymore. I mean, we just do a lot of carburetors, and we, you know, so we have a lot of this stuff. But I, I realize that not even probably, a, you know, your marina is probably going to have, you know, Burroughs tools. Burroughs was a very popular um, carburetor tool manufacturer in the, in the 60s and 70s and early 80s. So, but we've had that tool probably for over 30 years. So. But once I get this loose, I'll take that out of there. All right, there's a washer that did not come out, so I'll take a screwdriver and pry it out. Just like that. That washer goes right here onto this seat. So, I had a part uh, off camera, because uh, actually I forgot to tape it the first time. <laughs> so, But we've got this all cleaned up. Uh, we soaked it and we saw and we put it in our sonic tanks. We got most of the paint off, which is fine. That, that's like I say, that's all you really have to do. And all these passageways are clear. So I want to talk about some of these passageways and what they are. Okay. So these two big holes right here next to the screw holes, that's my secondaries. Okay. These, that's where the fuel is going to go in. So these little tubes here, okay, on the air horn. This is where the fuel actually gets pulled in to the secondary. So when I'm at wide open throttle, when I'm my boat's propped correctly, if it's spinning, you know, four boats usually kick in between 32, 3400, something like that. Like I say, assuming the boat's propped correctly, which obviously we hope it is, you know, this vacuum will start to pull this open and fuel will come through here. So it comes up through here and down here is the jets, okay? So those are the secondary jets. Now those are all the same size generally. That's why the thickness of the rod matters. Which we talked about in the other teardown video, see? So there's different rods here, different thicknesses. Obviously the thicker this is, the less fuel. So the bigger in a rod is the less fuel because it's taking up more square square foot area there in the, um, uh, in the jet itself. So, all right, that's, that's what those holes are. These here, these two big ones here in the primary, all right, those are the, where the fuel comes in from the main jets, okay? The main jets are down there screwed in. They're, what, 71 thousandths, which is correct for this carburetor. Um, these two guys here, the little tubes that are pressed into the brass, okay, that's my idle air bleeds. Now, on a marine engine, we commonly see these plugged up, okay? This tube actually presses down in here. If that tube is plugged up, it won't idle. Um, it, it just, or you have a very pathetic idle. So you got to make sure these are clean. When you blow, uh, if you take like a can of carb cleaner with like a little plastic straw, you know, the nozzle, you want to spray in there and you should see fuel come out of the main jet. Okay. It's going to come out of here too, but it's got to come out of the main jet. If you see fuel coming out of the main jet, then you know that passageway is clean. So very important. If not, take a little piece of wire. If you're unsure and run it down the chute okay just like this and go down you'll feel it when it goes down far enough so and you want to make sure that it's hospital clean in there very important on a no idle concern I never saw these plug up in a car hardly ever but on boats all the time so I don't know we always thought maybe because the flame arrestor wasn't as good as a paper air filter um, but that that's a very very common thing uh, probably the number one issue with these carburetors really these two guys right here, <clears throat> um, this is my idle circuit, 
okay? See there's a little brass tube pressed down in here? I should probably get a little pick so you can see right here. So that's my idle circuit. That also has to be free. That also connects to this passageway, okay? So the idle circuit is right here. See right here, there's a hole here, hole here, hole here. This is all connected. The fuel for the idle circuit <clears throat> comes in below, okay? Right there, see? That's where the fuel, that's what those needles are adjusting. We're adjusting the air mixture uh, through there. And the fuel comes in below that. Because that's why at idle, you don't see anything. You shouldn't anyway. You should never see anything. If When the choke's open, you stick your head down there at idle. You should never, ever, ever see any fuel. If you see fuel, one of two things happening. Either A, something's plugged, and it's just like plumbing. Nothing's going to flow if, if, if the vent's plugged. You know, it's no different than your toilet at your house. Um, or it's flooding over. You know, this needle's, the float level's too high. This needle's got a piece of dirt in it. And we're overflowing the carburetor with fuel, and it's going to flood over. So... That's the only thing you should ever see, or excuse me, you should never see fuel at idle, okay? Assuming you're idling at the correct speed. I mean, if, obviously, if your idle is 1,100, you might see a little bit. But if the idle is, you know, 600, 650, something like that, you shouldn't see anything. So these ports is where this is coming from, okay? So that's how that works. One thing you want to do on inspections, you want to check the, um, uh, the free play in the throttle body. That's not bad. Okay, we can rebush this. Uh, there was no bushings in here originally. This is a 5 16 shaft. Uh, you have to grind these screws out. See how they're staked in? You got to grind these out. You got to take this off. And actually, on a quadrajet, you got to take both shafts out at the same time because the linkage that connects the secondary, see, when I rev it up, see, that's four barrel. I, I, I can't take this guy out without sliding everybody out together. So I have to grind all eight of these screws out. Okay, take all these butterflies out, slide everybody out together. But like I say, this is not mission critical. You know, I mean, it's got a little plate. That's normal. It's not going to hurt anything. You know, we just don't want excessive. You know, you don't want a ton of clearance there. I, I've never seen the secondary ones go bad. I mean, unless you really got that much of a lead foot. <laughs> but, you know, like these early Crusaders, they got this big linkage right here, see? And if guys have the throttle cables not adjusted right and they're forcing this down... You're putting a lot of pressure against the throttle stop that's how you can beat these up too so it's always a good idea to have your throttle cables adjusted so you don't have a lot of tension against the carburetor again this is pop metal this is not the world's best metal you know this is cheap stuff so but um that's a crash course on the circuit uh idle circuit down here below below you saw in the teardown video that's the check ball that's what's allowing the fuel in to for the accelerator pump circuit this hole right here that hole and that hole is for the accelerator pump. That's my two good squirts where it comes up through the air horn. All right, that comes up right here. See that hole and that hole? That is for the accelerator pump circuit. So those two holes there, and it comes out right there. Okay, and right there respectively. So that's my uh, that's my squirters. All right. So that's pretty much the, uh, the, the the crash course on the circuits of a quadrajet. Most carburetors operate the same way. Uh, this port here is not used in marine production. This was a compensator port uh, for emissions that came out back in the 70s, or actually late 60s. There used to be a compensator piece that bolted in here, but see the casting was always set up for it. So there was never anything used here in a marine version. There was a cork seal here. There was a little heat compensator. Um, like I say, so that, that is nothing to worry about in a marine carburetor, but if we were working on a 69 Pontiac Catalina or something like that with a 400, you know, we probably would have that. Down here, like I said, I normally don't take this off on this divorce choke set. There's no reason to. You see there's that little linkage right there I was telling you about. All right, well, let me find it here. All right, this is, this is what you got to do when you, uh, hook the, um, when we put the air horn on, see this is that, see how narrow that is? This has got to go down and hook into here, just like that, see? Now that's connected, it's not going to fall off. I have to pull it out and turn it, you know, I got to kind of wiggle it a little bit, you know, it'll come out, just like that, okay? That's, you're not going to be able to see this with the air horn on, because once the air horn's on, you know, our vision is muffled, see? There's not a whole lot here you can do say that's pretty that's pretty narrow but I want to show you what that looks like down there 
you know, why I normally don't take it apart. The only time I take this apart is if it's got a heat choke on it because there's a seal there that needs replaced. But these I, I don't mess with. There's, there's no reason to. So, all right. So there's a crash course on some of the circuits. So the first thing we're going to do is uh, we're going to open up our carb kit. We're going to break the seal here. Yep, I own it now. I broke the seal. All right. So first thing we're going to do is we'll look at the contents. All right. So here's my needle and seat. Should be four pieces in here. Should be the seat, the gasket, the needle, and that little hook, which it looks like it's there. So we're going to break that open. All right, and I've inventoried all four pieces, so we're good. Here's my new fuel filter. <clears throat> Excuse me. This is my instruction seat. Okay, it gives me a, you know, a rough view um, of what to do. Most of these adjustments are not on my carburetor because this is set up for a car. So other than just a, a rough uh, exploded view, it's really not going to help me a whole lot. It's going to tell me how to adjust the float, you know, and adjust tanks and stuff. But um, on this particular car, we're not too awful concerned. But if I'm working on a car or something like that, I got to pay more attention to that. All right. Now, on these marine quadra jets, the later ones, okay, starting in the 80s, they, uh, they give you two, the aftermarket always gives you two throttle body gaskets. All right. Now, this carburetor, the starboard side, had the wrong gasket on it. And I'll talk about that here in a second. But um, you see here how there's a little notch. In between okay so there is an on here the only carburetor I ever saw use this was an OMC Cobra okay OMC Cobra was 1986 to 1991 okay uh, on, on GM engines obviously because obviously if the Ford engines didn't use quadra jets so if you had like a, a 4.3 OMC a, a 5.0 OMC or a 5.7 OMC you know 4.3 uh, 305 or 350 they use that the carburetor part number <clears throat> excuse me was 17059 286 i don't know why i remember that but i do um but 17059 286 is the um is is the carburetor part number that use that that's the only carburetor number i've ever seen use that so everybody else <clears throat> except 17059 286 quadrajet is going to use this okay now, and this is the gasket we took off. Now, I believe, this, this is a Chris's opinion, I believe the reason this is here is to prevent a secondary bog, okay? This helps bleed air into the secondaries. I, I've seen this mixed up quite often. I don't see any ill effects with it. So when I use the word wrong, you know, yes, it's not originally for that carburetor, but um, <clears throat> it's very, very interesting, though, uh, of why that was in there. Like I say, it had to be the engineers at OMC back, you know, 40 years ago decided that they needed this gasket uh, to help prevent a secondary bog. So this gasket here is for really old engines that had the heat crossover. Um, there was a metal plate. You know, this is a base gasket here. Uh, most of you guys are not going to use this. You've got to have an old Crusader to have this in the boat world. A lot of old GM engines had this, but you're not going to use this, generally speaking, because there was a metal plate that went there. So this is an air horn gasket. We'll go ahead so and sign uh, here. There's two little alignment notches. All right, <clears throat> so that's pressed in. All right. The rest of this stuff in this kit, <clears throat> excuse me. All right, the accelerator pump we're going to use, obviously. There's two gaskets in here for the fuel nut. Uh, the um, this here is for an uh, uh, the internal gasketed fuel nut. Okay, in the marine world, I only saw this on a Volvo Penta, like BB two hundred and sixty B, AQ two hundred and sixty, you know, AQ two hundred and thirty, you know, three hundred five, three hundred and fifty engines. They had the fuel inlet coming from the front, not the side. They use this quite a bit on the cars. Okay, but right here, this you know, on, on a marine engine. Like I say, only on Volvo. <clears throat> so this is the gasket that I'm going to use for this nut. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and put it on right now. So this gasket is for the externally gasketed nut. Remember I told you there was no gasket in here? All right. This little paper gasket right here. All right. That goes right here. All right. Oops, fell out. 
and then my filter, okay, with the opening towards the fuel and that goes in like that. And that's what you want. You want this gasket, you know, pushed in there, just like such, okay? So that's ready to go, all right? We got the, we got it loaded. This is for a heat choke carburetor. We don't have a heat choke carburetor. You don't use this on electric choke carburetors. If you put this on an electric choke carburetor, the choke's not going to work because the ground is where that those three screws to hold the electric choke on. Electric choke carburetors were Volvo Penta and uh, Mercury 470 in the marine world that I remember. So uh, the 488, uh, the 185, the 190 uh, Mercruiser's own engine that they used there through the late 80s, um, <clears throat> they had electric chokes. And again, we're just talking quadrajets. There were some electric chokes on two barrels, but we're just this this video is about how to do a quadrajet. All right. The rest of this, there's a ball. That's our new check. That's our new ball for our accelerator pump. All right. And they give you a new roll pin in here. I showed you a trick how I don't take the roll pin out. I just drive it and leave space. Okay. But the rest of the stuff is not for our carburetor, believe it or not. This is for a choke tube for a heat choke carburetor. Uh, this is the seal I was talking to you about an electric choke or a heat choke or excuse me heat choke carburetor to keep vacuum in So we're not going to use this. So the rest of this is file 13 for this discussion All right, and we'll set this stuff off to the side now One thing I'd like to do is I'd like to verify my cartridges on this sheet Okay, so uh, These type of kits here. They give you all kinds of stuff model 2 GC. That's two. That's two jets. Okay, B is one barrel, H, these are all one barrel. Um, so what we're gonna do, we know this is a Crusader because obviously Chris told us what it was. So we'll open up to this page here. 4GC is, is Rochester 4Jets. 4Jet was discontinued in about 1966. So I think they're like 1958, nine, something like that they came out and they just used them a few years before they went to the Quadrajet in 66. So uh, Crusader, uh, they don't really tell us. They just give us the most popular Crusader part number, 1782-403, and we set it at 9.30 seconds. Um, and that's, and they say a 427 engine, <laughs> quarter inch. I will tell you that we set these at 9.30 seconds. You know, and this is the other tricky thing when you start doing this stuff. You know, like you see Merc Cruisers and OMCs in here. There's that 59-286 carburetor I was talking to you about, about that cutout gasket on the throttle body. That's the only part number I ever saw that used on. You know, so your stuff's not in here. So unless you measure it when you take it apart, which is always a good idea if you didn't have any problem, you can always measure the float level. Um, or like I say, we use, um, like I say, most marine quadrant jets like this, quarter inch, 930 seconds is fine. That's, you're, you're gonna be in the neighborhood there with that float level. So um, with that said, we'll go ahead and start putting it together. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna epoxy these ports. Remember what I told you last time, with these ports, we want to epoxy them to prevent uh, leakage. And I'm gonna get some epoxy and I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back here, I got my JB Weld ready. I'm gonna open up this float. <clears throat> Another thing you wanna do, which I haven't talked about, which I really should do, is you want you wanna do some comparing, okay? One thing, when you take something apart, especially if you're not familiar with it, you should always compare what you take out instead of just assuming that the parts store gave you the right parts or whatever. All right, now I've done a million of these, so I, I'm kind of blowing through this, which I really shouldn't be. But one thing you want to do, like when you take gaskets out. Now, like obviously I talked about this gasket. If you didn't know that that was there, you would probably put that right back in, okay? But the whole point is, is you want to compare, you know, put it up against each other and make sure all the holes are there, you know? Make sure all these holes around, you know, same thing with the air horn gasket, you know? It's always always good practice to compare if you don't know, you know? Because chances are, if it ran okay for many, many years, you know, if you put back what's in there, it's probably gonna run for many years again, most generally. See, flipping around, there's no holes that aren't drilled. All right, again, just a, just kind of a more, you know, I guess common sense deal. All right, so first thing I wanna do here, is I'm gonna mix up my JB Weld. All right, it's a two-part epoxy. All right, we'll cap these off. All 
I just use a little screwdriver ice pick or something just like this I mix her up a little screwdriver so it's nice and gray 50 shades of gray haha uh -huh. all right just like that I will spread it almost like grandma making cookies right putting the frosting on this is what we're doing You know, we don't have to be Van Gogh here, you know, or Don Ross, you know, happy little clouds or whatever, but just basically you want to cover everything, okay? Just like that. I got that kind of covered all the way around. I'll grab some more. I want to do the primary ones. This is the rifle drillings for the idle circuit. You know, sometimes I've had to take these out. You know, if you've got something really hard in there, you know that doesn't want to come out then you got to tear this thing out to fix it you know same thing I want to make sure I'm covering all the areas all right All right, that's not too bad. And I just take a screwdriver and wipe that around just like that. There you go. All right. So that's ready to we can we can install this. All right. Let's throw our float box in the trash. So we're ready to go. Our surfaces are clean. I'm going to take the throttle body and I'm going to put it right over top. Now, on the marine carburetors, there were never any lock washers on these two screws. If you look at my screws over here, everybody's got a lock washer except these two. That's normal. I don't know why the marine engines never had lock washers. The car ones did, but the boat ones didn't. So they're, they're generally Phillips screws. The late, late model Quadrajets, uh, they had Torx. Uh, but these are oops. so we'll run these in and just snug these up because honestly when you torque this carpenter up these might come loose anyway <laughs> All right, so that's good right there. Make sure nothing's, you know, make sure your throttles and everything still moves. You don't want to be on a bind on anything, so that's good. All right, next thing we're going to put in is the throttle, excuse me, throttle, the idle air screws. All right, these needles. I want to make sure these things are free of burrs. There's nothing on them. They're not bent. Nobody over tightened them, and there's there's not a lip on there. These are really good. A lot of guys ram these in, like, with an impact, it seems like. You know, you don't want any marks or anything on these. If there are, you need to replace them, but... This stuff's getting old, it's very hard to replace this stuff. You can only find basically good used. So, like I told you before in the uh, teardown video, you know, I usually put these about four turns uh, when I give them back to the customer. So I'm gonna run this in with this tool, all right, until lightly seated. All right, and there you go. I'm lightly seated, you can see the needles all the way through, all right. I'm gonna back this out four turns. There's one, there's two, there's three, that's four. That's pretty good in, in most engines. You know, this thing should start up and idle halfway decent. This is something that the mechanic or somebody else uh, or the owner should check once it's in, just to make sure. Same thing, we'll run this in. All right. We'll go four turns. One, two, three, four. All right. Now, that part's done. Now I can take my carburetor stand and I can hook this up just like this. All right. Now I'm ready to flip this guy over. All right. And I'm ready to put the rest of it together. The next thing I put in is that accelerator pump ball. Remember this screw here? Okay. That's a tapered seat. There's no gasket goes here. I'm gonna grab this ball and I gotta go in that hole, that threaded hole right there. That's what I'm aiming for. 
Now, the best thing to do would probably be take a pair of needle nose. Unless you're really good at basketball, you can drop it right in there. A lot of times I can drop them right in there, but for the sake of argument, I'm not going to chance it. We'll put it on needle nose here, and we'll drop it into that hole. So, just like that. All right. Next thing I'm going to do is the screw. All right. The screw we got to drop into the hole too. We'll use needle nose. Drop it right in there. Okay. So that's in. We'll take our uh, screwdriver wherever it went, and we'll lightly tighten that down and snug it up. All right. There you go, that's in. Next thing I'm gonna do is we're gonna put our seat in for our needle and seat. I'm gonna grab it, I'm gonna inspect it. I'm gonna make sure there's nothing in it. There's no dirt, make sure it was drilled through. I've seen mistakes where that's not even drilled. That's where the fuel comes out. I always like to blow through it just to make sure there's not a piece of dust, dirt or anything because this is mission critical. If this doesn't seal, it floods over. This gasket, make sure my gasket's on here. All right, I'm gonna grab it and I'm gonna slide it in. Okay, then I'm gonna take my tool, all right, and I'm gonna put it in here. And I'm gonna, again, you'll probably use a big screwdriver at home, but be careful, you don't wanna, um, you don't wanna burr up the screwdriver slot and just snug it up. That's it, that's all you gotta do. We don't need a half inch impact, it's brass, it's easy to break, it's not going anywhere, all right. Next thing we're gonna do is assemble our float, all right. So I got my float, I got my pin. It does not matter which way this pin goes in. I can put it in this way, or I can put it in this way. Nobody cares, all right? So we'll go uh, from left to right. I'm gonna set this on here like this. Then I need to assemble my needle, all right? So the needle and this little hook. There's some aftermarket needles and seats that don't use this hook, okay? Uh, I've seen some Daytona carburetor kits uh, that's just a, a, just a check valve but the original style was this needle. So we're gonna hook this onto here. All right, my needle is hooked. Now remember on the teardown uh, shot, I said they had that assembled wrong. They had that hook through that hole, that's wrong. It's gotta go just like this and sits like that. That's why I keep the float at this kind of angle like that so it doesn't go anywhere. And same thing when I go to put it in, I'm gonna grab this and I'm gonna set it right in. Just like that, bam, I'm in, okay? <clears throat> this little casting right here, that, that see how these little uh, peened over things are right in the middle? And now what I'm looking for, I wanna make sure there's no binding. This thing has gotta be free, okay? I put my finger on here, and then I take my, I put my index finger here, then I use my uh, ring finger, and I push down this lightly. See how that's nice and free? It's not binding, you know? That's good. If it's binding, then this float's bent, something's wrong, that could cause a flooding concern. If this float sticks you know, down, for instance, like this, it's gonna flood over because I can't shut that needle valve off. So mission critical here. Gotta make sure that this float is free as a bird, just like Leonard Skinner. All right, next thing I'm ready to do is I'm ready to check the float level, all right? And like I told you, these 930 seconds are quarter inch. Now. You probably don't have these old school tabs. These came in carburetor kits 25 years ago. We say <laughs> because it's faster, but normally you're gonna use this, okay? So th this is normally what you're gonna be using. So obviously 830 seconds is a quarter inch, you know, uh, or 930 seconds, which is obviously a 30 second, you know, more. So I I'm not gonna use this. Well, actually, you know what, I should use it because you this is what most of you guys are gonna use. So what you wanna do is same thing. Index finger on the retaining, on the pin and then index a ring finger to push the float till it stops again just just till you feel it bottom out on the seat all right and then i'm going to take a measurement see it, it needs to go down a little bit it looks like we're about 7 30 seconds okay so you can do one of two things you can either a take the float back out and bend this a little bit as you can see the float is meant to be bent. See how it's got a little V cut there? That's meant to bend like that. All right, so we're gonna bend this evenly, just like that, all right? You can also adjust this in here. I'll, I'll illustrate that, that's the quickie way to do it, but um, you can actually hold this and use your ring finger and actually bend this down while it's in there. But I don't really recommend that, I suppose, for a novice. Make sure my pin's in there.
Okay, I'm in. All right. Now, if I use my cheater, here's my quarter inch. All right. This goes just like this. See, and I want this just to touch. Well, see, now it doesn't too. touch. So my float level's too low. So, yep. See, I'm probably, what, 10, 30 seconds, something like that, it looks like. I can't read it that good. So now, since I went the other way, I'm just going to take a little screwdriver and I'm going to bend this back. I'm gonna hold that down, bend it just a little bit, just like that. I'll use my cheater, my quarter inch. You want it just a touch. I'm gonna go a little more. Again, you can take the float out as many times as you want, you know. I just want this to touch. That's perfect. It's just touching that, see? So great, my float level's good, I'm done. That's really the only main adjustment on these marine ones. So now that that's done, we'll put our little uh, big ballpoint pen spring in this cavity right here. Oops, got a piece of dirt. <sighs> that's the other thing. You want hospital clean here. Any piece of fuzz just like that, that can go in here. That can that can screw up our whole dream here. So uh, we got to make sure we're hospital clean. Blow it out. That drops right in here. Again, that's a vacuum port. There's a hole I didn't show you. I should have. There's a hole in the bottom side of this that connect that when it bolts to the engine, that vacuum is there. All right. Here's the other th the next thing that's wrong. See this spring? This spring is on the outside of this meter rod. That is incorrect. That spring is supposed to go on this lip right here. Okay. So we're going to pop that off just like such. Okay. And then we're going to connect it to the inside like it's supposed to be. And again, this is stuff the service manual is not going to show you, you know, um, you know, even that little sheet. This is this is what makes this difficult. As, as time goes on, and and unfortunately, a lot of these season mechanics, you know, pass on. This to me, what I'm showing you right here is is good information, you know, because uh, like I say, the books don't show it. Oops. So I've got a. Probably wondering how I do this with gloves all the time, but it, it works. You just get used to it. There you go, just like that. See how that's on the inside? That those hook on the inside of that, that's correct. Okay? We're gonna make sure this is clean. I always take my fingers, wipe this down, because sometimes you get stalactites and stuff on there. Now this is tricky here. We don't want to bend these meter rods we want this to be good in fact it looks like it's a little bent probably from when they had trouble putting it in the last time okay because it's easy to bend all right all right good so what we need to do we have to line these up with those jets down there at the same time so go easy this is a go easy lettered moment so you put this in here and, and like I say the springs are gonna want to keep it up so you gotta take your fingers and you gotta to try to guide them into the jets slowly without dicking anything up. All right, don't put any major pressure on this. All right, see how it just went down? Now I'm gonna hold this down with my middle finger and then I'm gonna take a screwdriver and press this collar down, all right? This collar is gonna hold this operation in here, just like that. See how it sprung back up? That's what we're looking for. See how easy that moves? All right, that's that's exactly what you're looking for. I'm in. I'm not. I'm not binding on anything. It's free as a bird. Again, binding is is something that is will, will be dangerous. Well, not dangerous, but it's it, anything that binds in a carburetor is bad. You know, I, everything's got to be moving. All right. Now that's all I care. I push that down. Believe it or not, this air horn is going to keep it down. See this little guy right here? That goes over top that and keeps that from popping out. So really all that plastic collar is is for installation to keep it down. Because there would be no way we could put the air horn down <laughs> and line that up. With, you know, it would be a one in a million's chance, okay? All right, we're going to take our baffle. Make sure it's clean, all right? And this fuel baffle goes right over top, just slides right in. We're done. And I always check, make sure that still moves. Okay, make sure not buying anything. Next thing is we're gonna take our um, accelerator pump return spring. All right, that just slides right in there, that's it. All right, 
Next thing we're going to do is we're going to get ready for our air horn gasket. Now, this gasket is cut out right here. There's a little subtle cut. All right. So you take your finger and you break the cut just like that. See how that broke that out? That has to go around the metering rods. So what you need to do is you slide this between the metering rods just like this. All right. And then I'm going to put it on the alignment pins right there. Push it down with my fingers and thumbs. And then I'm going to, again, check to make sure that there's no binding. The gasket is is completely around there. It's not touching anything. This still moves free as a bird. We're good. Okay. I see... I see guys where this gasket here, if you miss, that'll actually keep the float down and it'll flood over. You'll put the carburetor back on, it'll pour gas everywhere. And you'll be like, what the hell, I just rebuilt this thing, it doesn't work. All right, next thing we're gonna do is the accelerator pump. Now I like to put lube on this. Lube here, we'll lube her up. I just lube all this stuff. I'll just blow through these again. And these two tubes here go in the secondary holes in the jets. So I'm using my fingers, hold that in. <clears throat> Just like that. Two long screws to the back. These screws have lock washers. I put one of these Jesus clips in there, they come in the kit. Alright, and the one thing I want to make sure is make sure that choke blade is, is square across. It is. If I if it isn't, I can loosen these screws and hold it, you know, hold it closed and then retorque it, but that's good. Alright. Secondary meter rods, like I told you, make sure these are even. That's pretty good. The letter is H. Like I say, same boat, <laughs> different letters. Like I say, not mission critical, just pay attention to what it is. These meter rods, that it should be just a little bit bent to the right, just like that. That top hook. Make sure these aren't dented or anything like that. You hook these in. Just like so, and then drop them in. You'll know when you hit the hole. You'll feel it go down all the way, just like that. And then take your little screw, it's a little tiny 432nd thread screw, real easy to break. So don't over tighten this, it's not going anywhere. Take your little screwdriver, like I say, some are T8 Torx, the later ones, just like that. That's all you got to do. And then check it, should snap right back, okay? Just like that. There is an adjustment for this spring loaded valve, it's done right here, but normally you don't have to mess with it. That little stop screw there and that screw there winds that spring. Turn that spring, turn that screw clockwise, tightens that spring, and then you lock the set screw. But I usually do these by feel, that feels good. All right, the next thing is, is we'll put the accelerator pump linkage on. Inside hole, we'll lock this, there's a little pin here, we lock that in, just get that to put that linkage on there. Bring that up like such. And then you're gonna have to use your little screwdriver, push this down, you're trying to hit this hole here. So it's kind of wiggling around, you get it, you'll feel it when you get it in. Just like that. And I do it so it's flush. There you go, perfect. I just push that in so it's flushing here that way the air cleaner, flame rust, or whatever goes right in. And we'll double check it, make sure it comes right back. Looks good. This is the idle speed adjustment that'll be performed on the boat. So that, that's what's gonna adjust this throttle for your idle stop setting, or curb idle as it's referred to. So, we'll put this back on here. All right, the last thing we'll do, well, second to last thing, our fuel filter, you saw me assemble that earlier. Gasket's inside, gasket outside. My little spring to keep the filter up against the nut. Put that in like that. Run that in, take our one inch wrench. Still pulling it open, but believe it or not, this actually helps prevent a bog because, you know, you have vacuum with the throttle blades, you know, 
partially closed, okay? The only time you don't have vacuum is wide open throttle. When the blades are wide open, you know, then there's nothing there to hold vacuum. Well, I just take a pair of pliers and crimp this over a little bit. You don't have to get crazy on this. Just make sure, because it ain't going anywhere. And that's fine. Now, the last thing I like to do is on a boat, you don't need uh, a much choke. So I always make sure that this linkage here touches this. So I take my pliers and I bend that to touch that. Okay, because when the when the vacuum brake opens, the choke pull off, see, the, ch the choke tension is going to be wanting to pull this down. So that gives me maximum, you know, brake. So once I get the engine started, I want to break this choke so it, it, it doesn't run so rich. So that's what I do. Same thing with the secondaries. When the choke is down, I can't open that. See, I have to release my vacuum to open this because obviously with vacuum, it closes that and that controls my fuel. So that leak there maybe could have caused a bog, maybe going into, uh, you know, if you really accelerated heavy. But um, that's basically it. We'll put the air horn gasket on just like that, you know. And uh, this carburetor is ready to ship back out to them. So um, it's ready to be installed on the boat. Sounds good. All linkages are good. Oh, one more crash course. This number here, I don't know if you can see it. I don't know how well it's going to come out. But uh, it, there's the part number for the carburetor. 17059293. And then you see an 0402. So 0402. That's the date code. This carburetor was made the the um, uh, fourth, or excuse me, the fortieth day of the year in 1982. Well, I think he said his boat's in 1983. By the time the carburetor gets made, by the time it gets put on an engine, by the time the engine gets sold, by the time the engine gets put in the boat, and yada yada yada, that's believable, you know. So obviously that date should be before where the boat was, you know, titled. You would hope. So, in the old days. Um, well, I should say old days, but the uh, the last number, if it ended in a uh, odd number, used to be a manual transmission vehicle. So if you're working on a car, uh, you know, if it ended in even, it was usually automatic transmission. If it ended in odd, it was usually manual transmission. I've seen it all over the board on boats because obviously they don't have, you know, per se transmissions, you know, but um, or like a car, I should say. So that's that's kind of some, uh, you know, quadrajet or actually just flat Rochester tech. You know, if you're working on a 1GC or, you know, a little monojet or a 2GC, that little four digit code back there underneath the part number, that that's the uh, build date. So the 40th day of the year in 82. So that's when this carburetor was manufactured. So that concludes uh, this uh, rebuild of this uh, quadrajet for his starboard side on that engine. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, uh, comment. You know, uh, like I said, I just want to show you what, what's basically involved in doing one of these things. Um, you know, any questions, comments, uh, put it in there. I'll, I'll try to answer them. Thank you very much for watching.